Welcome to Electron Online. So now let's take a closer look on the methodology of how to actually solve one of those differential equations if it's an exact differential. So again, if we find an equation that has some function of x and y times dx plus some other function times of x and y times dy being set equal to zero, we suspect that it's an exact differential. It is an exact differential if there's a solution called u, which is also a function of x and y, which can then be differentiated, or we can then find the differential of that called du, which can set, be set equal to the initial equation right here. That means that a then represents the partial u with respect to x, and b represents the partial u with respect to y. And since this equation is really equal to that equation is equal to zero, that means then du must be equal to zero as well. Which means that if we then integrate both sides, we can then say that the solution to the original differential equation, u, can be set equal to a constant. So that will be a key to helping us solve the equation. So what we can say then, of course, is that a is equal to the partial of u with respect to x, b is equal to the partial of, ooh, this should be u, not y, the partial of u, with respect to y, and therefore if we then take the partial of a with respect to y and the partial of b with respect to x, like this, then they must be equal to one another. So in order to solve them then, is we're looking for u, and u can then be defined as being equal to the integral of either a or b, let's start with a, a times dx, plus a constant of integration, will be, which will be termed in terms of a function, let's call it the function k, which will contain the variable y. Or we can also find uh, u by taking the integral of b times dy plus some other function, let's call it l, times, uh, which is a function of x. Now, of course, we don't know yet what k, of, what k is and what l are. Uh, these are functions that we need to determine some way, some way through the process, but at least we know that that will be the general form of the solution. So what that means is we take whatever is in here, we take the integral of that, we add some other function to that, we know that is equal to u. Now, the question is, how will that actually give us the solution? So now here's the really tricky part. So notice that if we take the integral of this portion of the differential equation times dx, we'll get some other function of x and y. So we say that u now will be equal to some function of x and y, Plus, of course, the thing here that's still unknown, some function of the function y. Then what we can do is, what we can say here is, if we then take the partial of this with respect to uh, y right here, then that should be equal to b. So what we can then say, then, we know that the partial of u with respect to y must equal to b. And of course, we will know what b is because it's right there in the equation. Then we can take the partial of u of this quantity right here, and that should also equal to b. So therefore, we can say that if we take the partial of this quantity right here with respect to y, so the solution that we got right here, which is that function of x and y plus the function of y like this, if we then take the partial of this with respect to y, well, that must be equal to b, so therefore that must be equal to b. And it's easy to take the derivative of this with respect to y, and then this will then be written as follows. So from here, we can simply say that this will be the, the partial with respect to y of f of x, y, plus the partial with respect to y of k of y, Oop, k of y, let me write it like this, and that must equal b in the original equation. And this will allow us to figure out what this unknown function is, because all we have to do is then eliminate things on the left side and the right side that are equal to each other, because if it's an exact differential, a lot will be able to be eliminated, and then you'll be very, it'll be very easy to solve for this portion right here, because this is usually equal to zero or a constant or something like that, which then becomes really easy to integrate to get rid of the differential, and that's how we will solve it. So again, if this is an exact differential, we know that a and b can be expressed as the partial of u with respect to x and the partial of u with respect to y, and since we know that this equation is equal to zero, that means the u is equal to zero, and therefore u will be equal to a constant. We use that then also to show that if we then take the partial of, of um, oh no, let me take it back. If we then take the partial of a with respect to y, 
and that should then be equal to the partial b with respect x to verify this, that this is an exact differential, we then take u to be the integral of a dx or the integral of b dy, either one, doesn't matter. We add to then a function of y or a function of x, depending upon which integral we, we uh, use. And then, of course, we'll have u equal to some function plus this unknown. This will be an unknown. But then we know that the partial of u respect to y is equal to the other part of the function. And then we can set that equal to the partial of y of this that we just got. And then we set them equal to each other, and that will allow us to solve the equation. So that's the strategy. Now you say, wow, this looks pretty complicated. And in a way it is, it's kind of a brain twister. But when you see a few examples, you'll say, oh, now that looks pretty straightforward. Now I understand how this works. So if you're still confused at this point, don't worry. A few examples will probably lift that confusion. And so therefore, stay tuned. And we'll show you how to actually employ that on some real examples.